What is going on, everybody? It is March 23rd, Friday slate. We've got 10 games, and in case you missed it in the live stream or on Twitter last night, we've got my last day of work at my current day job. And starting Monday, this will be my job. I will be heading to work for Awesomeo um, and the website at awesomeo.com. For those that do not know who that is, this should uh, help a little bit. You'll see here Awesomeo is the current number one ranked DFS player on the planet. Um, so I'm very excited. It's going to be a big change for me. I'm not entirely sure what it entails for everything that I have here, but there will still be a, uh, Ooh, congrats to Awesomeo and that little shout out there. Um, I will have more updates as we go. Uh, projections are still staying, so don't worry about that. Um, but as I get more information, you guys will get more information. Uh, but for right now, my new job after like, I don't know, probably 10 or 11 o'clock this morning, uh, will be solely in the DFS space. And I couldn't be more excited to get started. Uh, thanks to everybody. Thanks to all of the people that were my patrons. Um, thanks to everybody that's liked and subscribed and watched these videos. Uh, the growth that, you know, this had over the past couple months and throughout this basketball season has been ginormous. And uh, I think that that's really key to me being able to do this. Um, so I'm really excited for what I'm going to be able to do and really excited to be able to spend, you know, 24-7 on this instead of, you know, missing out on a big chunk of the day. So you're going to get basketball from me. You're going to get baseball from me. Uh, you're going to get football from me when it's relevant. Um, I'm going to get into golf, NASCAR. We're, we're going to touch it all now. Um, so I appreciate everybody that's been a part of this little journey. Um, step one is complete. We're, we're on to step two now, and uh, it's kind of awesome. So needed to get that out of the way. Let's get into the slate. First game up, uh, Pacers hosting the Clippers. Uh, Pacers 110.75 implied total. Uh, they are two and a half point favorites at home. Um, matchup wise, it's actually pretty solid. Uh, Clippers have locked down, you know, the small forward position, but other than that, uh, everything else is probably pretty favorable. Oladipo at 8,900, 8,200 on DK. Four straight games in the 30s, 28 before that. He's not been hitting value at all. I don't know if he's just running out of gas or just pacing himself for the playoffs. Uh, but he's been different lately. It's kind of weird. Um, for somebody that was just so dominant early in the season, you know, up in the 10,000 salary range, um, I think he's in a good spot. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I wouldn't be worried about him. I think that he has upside for GPPs, but something's different about his game. And, uh, Getting to value, at least on FanDuel, looks like it's been pretty tricky. Um, he's not someone that I, w I think is, like, smashable tonight, but I still like taking or like thinking about taking a flyer on him in a GPP. He's the type of guy that can go off, and, you know, he controls the ball. Uh, Darren Collison is the other guy that I would say is pretty interesting here. 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Um, you know, went for 37 a couple nights ago, uh, which would be nice. No worries about defense at the point guard spot. Um, but Collison's got three games at value since he's been back. Should slowly be getting his legs back. Uh, home game, coming off a of rest. Uh, no problems taking him. And then finally, Miles Turner. Uh, I'm always sort of interested in him. He always has the ability to, you know, have a big night. Um, been really steady lately, too. Uh, I think that he'd be a, a fine play in cash or GPPs. Indiana actually has the third best center matchup per 5x5. Five five. Um, 
seven and a half big games. It's an average of the last 40 and the last 10. So seven and a half big games, only two and a half duds, one and a half monster. Puts them third overall. Uh, it's a really good spot. So a more than okay. Let me, I'm actually going to give him a little bit of a bump. More than okay having a little bit of Oladipo. Uh, more than okay having a little bit of Collison. And then I definitely like Turner in that mid-tier for centers. For the Clippers, 108.25 implied total, which is 10th. Uh, difficult matchup at point guard. Not the best for small forward or power forward. Solid for shooting guard and center. Um... We'll start with Austin Rivers. Uh, I don't have a problem having him there. GPP only, you know, it's it's boom bust for him. Uh, you know, salary says right around 30. He's really regularly either 20 or 40 plus. So, you know, be prepared for it, but no problems having him. Uh, Tobias Harris, been a little bit since he's gone crazy, but 7,600 I think could provide some value. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably be like even weight on him. At some point in time, I might need to knock Lou Will down, but at 6,800, it's not going to be tonight. Um, especially seeing that, uh, you know, shooting guard is a pretty decent matchup. Um, I'll, I'm going to be going back to the Lou Will well on uh, FanDuel. See, I mean, like, he's for 6,800, you know, you're looking for 34 fantasy points or higher. He hit 36 in the last one, and it wasn't a particularly good game. Um, but, again, he's the type of guy that can get hot and really just score the basketball and, you know, put up a 45, 50-point game, fantasy point game, that is. And then, finally, DeAndre. 8,300. Uh, he's been playing really well. Went for 40 uh, a couple nights ago, then went for 50 on the back-to-back. -back. Uh, gets a day's rest, comes back in here. Um, 8,300 is not really the best price for him, um, but he's okay tonight. He's not going to be somebody that I'd be focusing on. I, I had a lot of him two nights ago. Uh, now I just think that he's functional. Um if you want to take a flyer on someone like Montrez Harrell, you know, be prepared. He only played 11 minutes in the last game. Um, don't just chase that 44. Uh, it's pretty risky. Now, Wizards hosting the Nugs. Uh, one and a half point favorites for the Wizards. Eighth highest implied total. Uh, this should be a really good game. These first two games in particular are both very relevant. You know, everybody's got something to play for, which is always uh, which is always good. Beal at 7,900. Um, I realize that he's only had one major game lately. Uh, Washington, solid matchups across the board. Uh, with Beal at 7,900, I'm pretty interested in him. Uh, to get him under 8,000 is really good. So uh, he's actually going to be somebody that I focus on at the shooting guard spot. Uh, he's just, to me, just a little bit underpriced. Um, Otto Porter at 7,900 is not somebody I like as much. In this last two-week stretch, he hasn't hit 40 fantasy points, which would be his, uh, his goal spot here. I think he's only worth a flyer in a GPP, but I wouldn't really trust him right now. Um, Markeef at 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Um, man, he's been up and down lately. Three games in the 30s, three games in the teens. Uh, if you want to use him, it's got to be in a GPP. Um, he's a little bit better on DK, but don't go too crazy there. Kelly Oubre uh, went off uh, two nights ago. He's at 5,400. Um, you know, before going off, he's been up and down. Uh, I think he's also worth a GPP flyer at best, but he's not somebody that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, really, the, the, my main focus coming out of Washington will be Bradley Beal. Denver Nuggets. 
Uh, Nuggets, 109 implied total, uh, one and a half point underdogs in Washington. Um, tough matchup at shooting guard. Um, not the best matchup for centers. Pretty solid at small forward and power forward. Uh, Wilson Chandler, he's a GPP flyer at 6,000. You know, he's a guy that can go for 20. He went for 20 in back to back games where he can get up into the 40s. Um, uh, he's not a guy that I'm particularly on tonight, but. Uh, you know, knowing that small forwards and power forwards of the fourth and sixth best matchups tonight um, makes it a little bit more appealing. That's right in his wheelhouse. Uh, Will Barton is fine for me. Uh, I don't really like the matchup. Um, he's not somebody that I'm going to actively seek out. Same sort of scenario for Jamal Murray. Uh, Jokic at 9,500. I could entertain. It, it makes me a little nervous uh, that the matchup isn't great. If we take a look at it here, four big games. There's been four duds. Um, I feel like Jokic sort of transcends that stat, though. He plays so differently than most centers. Uh, so I wonder if that could be a little different for him. Has gone for 50 and 60 plus. Um, you know, multiple times in this last two-week stretch, I'll likely be uh, relatively average um, exposure on Jokic tonight. And then Paul Millsap, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Uh, turns out I needed to be big on him on the 21st after having multiple days in a row just of him being, you know, an A or an A-. minus. Uh, finally went for 51 um, I don't know if that's just an aberration or the start of something good. I think he's in a fine spot today. I'm not going to go crazy over it. Uh, I will likely have a little bit of him, but I'm not going to be pounding. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be pounding Paul Millsap very hard. <laughs> uh, time for a sip of water on that one. Um, let's head to Cleveland. Ah, uh, there it is. So, the Cavs, I have them as 10-point favorites at home against the Suns. It'll probably be a little bit higher than that, but there's not a line out yet. Uh, number two implied total. Obviously an exceptional matchup. Who knows how this shakes out. Um, and in terms of injuries, I'm not expecting Nance. Hood is questionable, and I think Tristan Thompson is questionable. All of those things can slightly change. Uh, but for right now, you know, the guys that we want to look at are obviously LeBron, 13-1 on FanDuel, 12-1 on DK. I mean, he's been playing his last five games, 70, 70, 70, 72, 72. That's fucking bananas. Look, it's very clear that LeBron James can do whatever he wants to do against the Phoenix Suns tonight. I'm not telling anybody anything that they don't already know. He is the best player on the floor by a mile. I, I don't know how, what to make of LeBron playing against Phoenix at $1,300. Like, Memphis lost by 62 or something last night. I, there's no reason that Phoenix can't do the same thing. Um, I, I like LeBron. I don't really know how to best manage him. I'm gonna. It's gonna take some time and see, uh, you know, how often he pops up coming through the optimizer, because obviously 13-1 is a big price tag, um, but he's been scoring at you know he's LeBron and he's playing arguably the worst team in basketball, especially without T.J. Warren who is at least functional on the wing. Um, he's going to, like, if he wants to, he could eat these people alive. I don't know how to balance that in an era of tanking. So, you know, buyer beware on LeBron. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity for him to play, like, 28 minutes and only, like, not come back out at halftime. But who knows how it'll shake out. Obviously, you know, he's got a very high floor in a game like this. Um... I just, right now in the NBA season, all bets are off. I'd be scared to pay up 13000 in a GPP. Uh, George Hill went for 32 in his last game. He's 4700 
uh, if these injuries continue to happen, I think that he looks like a perfectly fine, uh, you know, mid-tier to low-tier uh, point guard option. Kevin Love at 7,500, you know, he's been great in his two games back. Uh, I have no reason to think that Kevin Love can't have a big night. Uh, I think he looks really good at power forward. And uh, Jordan Clarkson, um, I know people were not very happy with that four-and-a-half point performance um, two nights ago, but... At 4,500, if he's going to get, you know, a decent amount of time, like in the previous games, he's got 28 minutes, 32 minutes. Uh, I think he's worth, he's certainly worth a flyer, especially in a game like tonight where LeBron can, doesn't necessarily have to carry much offensive load. Uh, still no Kyle Korver, you know, from the death of his brother. So what we need to do is just keep an eye on Rodney Hood and Tristan Thompson, and we'll see what opens up after that. Phoenix. Uh, I've got Booker in, no TJ Warren, no Tyson Chandler. Um, I really like Devin Booker, actually. Uh, Phoenix would be like a 10-point underdog, mid-tier uh, point total. But it's a good matchup. Cleveland sucks on D. And uh, Devin Booker at 7,300, if he's able to play, I'll, I'll have a decent amount of him. I think that's worth the flyer. And with a 7.30 start, we should probably have that news regardless. Um, speaking of, no live stream tonight. Uh, tonight is a night of celebration, so no live stream. Uh, Josh Jackson, 7,100. Um, you know, with TJ Warren out, it's he's worth a flyer, has the ability to, you know, put up a big night. I would temper my expectations, but um, I don't have a problem taking him there. Uh, no thanks on uh, Dragon Bender, unless it's just a, in a GPP format only. Alfred Payton down to 5,200. Um, his minutes are down. I, I I still have to take that flyer on him because he could go off. I think he's definitely worth looks in GPPs. I wouldn't play him in cash. I don't think there's enough trust there. And then Alex Len, 4,400. You know, should be good to get 20-something minutes. And with no Nance, you know, maybe very little Tristan Thompson... Um, I'm going to cough. Uh, Len should sort of have a field day in the paint. Um, his only real guy to go against would be Ante Zizic. So uh, I think Len is a really interesting um, center punt tonight. And then, you know, you got to keep an eye on the news. If Booker is out, that'll open up some of the other trash at the bottom. <laughs> the Knicks hosting the Wolves. Knicks 108 implied total, which is 11th. They are six and a half point underdogs uh, at home. Uh, not a ton to like here. Um, news came out yesterday that Moutier is very much the starting point guard. Uh, he played 28 minutes um, two nights ago where I have him tonight and at 4700 uh, I think that's a pretty solid play actually um, he went for 25 points in the last game um, I'm not I'm definitely a little worried about uh, Minnesota's defense but at the same time it's not the same team without Jimmy Butler there um, I don't have any problem using Moody A in a GPP um, tonight I think that Cantor looks pretty good uh, if you think he gets the minutes uh, two nights ago, he got 31. The night before, or two nights before that, he got 18. So I've got him at 25 right now, which I think is a, a solid spot for him. If he gets that time, you know, I'd be pretty comfortable with him hitting value. But really, you just need to you need to temper your expectations of taking guys on the Knicks. They're playing a ton of guys. They're really mixing up rotations. So everybody that's on this squad is is a GPP play only. Um, I. I would never recommend anybody here too much. Minnesota, however, uh, 114.5 implied total, which is fourth. Uh, we've got Towns at 10-6, 9-8 on DK. Um, Towns with two games at 55 or higher, one game at 61, uh, all in the past two weeks. Uh, no reason to hate him. Um, I'll likely have a decent amount of Towns. Uh, I think there's a lot of upside there. Um, it's not as if uh, 
like Cantor is going to chase him out on the wing. And after that, you're getting to guys that are not capable of guarding Carl Anthony Towns. So he could have whatever he wants tonight. Uh, Bielitsa, um, 5,800. If he's going to get a big chunk of minutes, and I think that uh, a couple nights ago was just an aberration, had normally been playing up in the high 30s. If he gets his normal allotment of minutes, um, he's in a great spot. Uh, I have no problem having a, a solid amount of Bielitsa. Uh Wiggins at 7,000 is probably a little too high for me. He had his big game uh, three nights ago, went for 41. Um, that's like the ultimate... Andrew Wiggins game. Um, I don't necessarily love him here. I think he's perfectly fine as just like filler. Phil filler is probably not the right word, but like I'll be relatively neutral on him um, for the night. Um, let's see. Jeff Teague is someone that I'm not super worried about. 7,400 salary starting to climb is not probably for me. Uh, basically, I'll focus on Towns and Bielitsa, and I'll have little bits of Wiggins, Teague, and Gibson, and then uh, Crawford and GPPs. I think you know you can you can take him on a flyer at four thousand. Raptors one sixteen point seven five implied total, number one on the slate. They're hosting the Brooklyn Nets. Um, I'm assuming Lowry and DeRozan both play, uh, but, you know, keep an eye on it now. This is obviously, we're getting close to a situation where teams might start resting guys even when they're good. Toronto has a very solid lead at the one spot, and they're going to be very big favorites whether Lowry and DeRozan play or not, so they can slowly get these guys a little bit of rest. Exceptional matchup for Kyle Lowry. Uh, point guards are uh, duty against uh, Brooklyn. Wait, Brooklyn is duty guarding point guards. Um, Lowry at 8,300 is definitely somebody that I would w be willing to explore. Uh, three straight games right at 40 points, so there's definitely some upside there for him. Um, it does make me a little nervous that Brooklyn takes away threes so much, but Lowry's crafty. Uh, so I would say that I like Lowry more than DeRozan heading into tonight. Um, I think Serge Ibaka at 5,100 looks exceptional. Um, that's a great sort of value play at power forward that lets you spend up somewhere else. I know that he didn't have the best game in the most recent one, but he only played 23 minutes. Um, I think that he has a chance to, to have a very solid game. I, I like him in GPP scenarios. And then, you know, Van Vliet, is 5,000 is a lot for him to get somebody that's, you know, a backup, but he does play a ton of minutes, generally speaking. And in this situation, you would expect him to maybe have a tick up in minutes. So I think Van Vliet could be okay as a, a GPP flyer. And then uh, that's probably it. I mean, you can talk yourself into like a Pascal Siakam GPP punt. Um, I'll likely only have a very tiny, tiny, like maybe one or two lineups with him. Um, but for me, my focus would be Lowry. And it's even a little tempered just because... I'm not sure um, Dwayne Casey's going to have them going uh, whole hog at the Nets. Speaking of the Nets, the Nets are 12-point underdogs in Toronto. They have the 16th highest implied total and a very difficult matchup. Shooting guard, small forward, power forward, all just really terrible. Uh, point guard, actually, not so bad. Um... Nobody just jumping off the page here. Rondé Hollis Jefferson at 6,600, I think, is uh, pretty interesting. But um, he's running into a very difficult defensive matchup, so temper your expectations there. Um, D'Angelo Russell at 6,800. You can probably talk me into that. Like, I think the grades on here are, are very appropriate for this team. They're all just guys I would want to cycle in and out. Nobody that I would really want to focus on. Um, everybody's just getting this like weird balanced allotment of minutes. Water's so damn good. 
Um, yeah, so like I'll have a small amount of Hollis Jefferson, D'Angelo Russell, uh, probably Damari Carroll, but I'm not excited about it. I don't want a lot here. And on a 10-game slate, um, you don't need to play too much of things you're not stoked about. Now to the Bulls. Blech. Bulls, five-point underdogs at home against Milwaukee. Milwaukee likely to be without Giannis. Um, Markkanen is supposed to play tonight. Uh, no Zach Levine, no Chris Dunn, no Paul Zipser. So nobody that's really good. <laughs> um I'm willing to take a flyer on campaign. Um, not so sure I'd be willing to take a flyer on marketing coming back. But if we know that he's going to start, I'd think about it at 6,000. Uh, you know, I'll have a, I'll likely have a small amount of David Nawaba. Um, the only real guy that I would want to pay attention to would be Justin Holiday. Uh, with Levine out, and then um, no uh, Antonio Blakeney uh, is also out. Uh, Holiday might just sort of have to play a little bit more, and at minimum salary on FanDuel, he could be an interesting flyer uh, in a GPP. But there's nobody here that you should be relatively confident in playing in cash. Now the Bucks. Um, 111 implied total, five point favorites in Chicago. No Giannis, great matchup. Um, Chris Middleton at 8100 is higher than I would like, but he's put up 40 in his last two. Generally plays pretty well uh, without Giannis, so um, he should. Pro he's probably going to be pretty popular tonight, uh, and I think with good reason. Eric Bledsoe, 7800. He's someone I'm definitely interested in. Uh, I think that's a really good price for him. And, uh, you know, with the matchup, I definitely want to focus on a lot of guys here from Milwaukee. The guy that I'm really interested in is uh, Jabari Parker. 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Played 30 minutes in the most recent game, went for 37 fantasy points. Um, I would expect that to happen again. And then the big key for this, I think, I don't know. Jabari Parker from Chicago. So Parker, without Giannis, you know, kind of getting the keys to the castle for this game, heading home to Chicago. Narrative Street is going to be going crazy. But even if he wasn't going to Chicago, I think he's an exceptional play. Um, but with him going there, uh, I, he's one of my favorite, if not my favorite play on the entire board. If he gets 28 minutes, I would be baffled if he didn't smash value tonight. Um, love Jabari Parker. And then John Henson, uh, more than okay with having him. Not too much to worry about uh, from the center position. And at 5,100, very reasonable amount of value. Uh, gets to that neutral spot regularly. Um, has gotten into the 30s a couple times. So that's all you're looking for with a center at 5,100. Oklahoma City, 111 implied total. They are six and a half point favorites at home against the Heat. Um, we've got Russ at 11-4. Uh, not the best matchup. It's sort of like a below average across the board. Miami does scare me just a little bit in that regard, but 11-4 for Russ is a pretty tasty price. Um, I'm going to like him a lot in GPPs. I would expect some pretty solid ownership. Um, just because of the way point guard shakes out tonight. I think Curry will probably be higher owned than he should be, and I'm hoping that uh, Russ is sort of the, the beneficiary of that. So I, I definitely like Russ at point guard tonight. Uh, Paul George at 8,100 is somebody that I have a bunch of interest in. Um, I love the position, you know, with Giannis not playing and LeBron being at another stratosphere in price. I think Paul George is a really nice option at that next tier. Uh, Mello, you know, who knows what sort of Mello you're getting, but 5,300 is definitely GPP 
worthy. Um, you know, he's been hitting value multiple times at that. A couple 33-point games, 26 and 27, all of those are, you know, good enough for you. Um, but if you can get up in those 33 range, I think that's what you're looking for. And then Steven Adams, um, 7,000. You know, I like him. He works hard. GPP only. Goes from 41, 56 to 20s and 10s. Uh, I likely won't have very much of him. And then Corey Brewer, you know, 5000 is feels too expensive, but 30 48 30 33 still worth a flyer. Uh, you can't just ignore him. Not like I've been doing. Uh, Miami. Six and a half point underdogs in Oklahoma City. 17th highest implied total. Uh, good matchup for shooting guards. Not the best matchup across the board, though. Um, Dragic at 6,500. Just criminally underpriced. Uh, big fan there. Um, don't love the matchup. Don't just think about it in terms of Russ. It's a team game. Um, I'm going to have a bunch of him because of that price point. Don't have much of a choice. Uh, Josh Richardson at 6,200. He's right where I think he should be. Um, starting to get his minutes back. I'll have an average amount of him. I think Wayne's too expensive at 4,500, especially if they're going to be giving Magruder more minutes. Uh, so what we really want to do is just look at Olenek and James Johnson. Uh, Johnson only got 22 minutes in the last game. Still efficient, you know, at more than a point per minute, but for now, he's probably priced in a spot, in a spot where you don't need to just smash him. Um, I don't know what's going on with Bam. I would have been expecting more minutes from him, but he's not getting them, so who knows? It could come today. Uh, but I don't see as much to like on Miami tonight as I normally do. Spurs and Jazz, oh, I don't like this at all. 99 point implied total for the Spurs. Three point favorites at home. 18th highest implied total. I don't like it. I don't really want it. Um, I Three straight games in the 50s for LaMarcus Aldridge. I would be very surprised if he did that again against Utah. Um, I'm probably not going to have much of anything in this game. Uh, Kyle Anderson is worth a GPP flyer. I got a cough again. I hate I'm sorry, guys. We're getting there. We're slowly getting there. Yeah, I think Kyle Anderson is worth a GPP flyer. That's about it for me. I don't like this game. I don't like San Antonio. I don't trust them. Um, it seems like Pop is tightening up the rotation a little bit, but I, I don't know. I don't really know what to make of it right now. So for me... In the way that I play for GPPs, uh, it'll be a little bit of Kyle Anderson, and it really won't be much of anything else. Utah, 96-point implied total. Dead last on the slate. They're three-point three underdogs in San Antonio. The only saving grace for this game is that they should. both teams are going to be trying very hard, but both teams very good defensively. Um, it really mutes what you, know, you need done in fantasy. Um, Donovan Mitchell, 7,500. Uh, I'm okay with it. I mean, the dude's steady, mid-30s or higher. Uh, but I don't see any real upside for me in a GPP. I will barely own him. Rudy Gobert at 8,800. Um, I'd be a little bit more interested in that, actually. I don't think that the defensive game is sort of a bad thing for him. But, again, I don't see a ton of upside in, in this game. These are just two teams that are going to play a really good basketball game, or at least a solid basketball game, but I don't think there's a ton of interest in it from a GPP perspective. Or a, just a fantasy perspective in general. Uh, Portland, 6.5 point favorites at home against the Celtics. Uh, 16th highest implied total. Um, and, you know, not the best matchup. Boston, obviously pretty good on D. 
Uh, Dame at 9,300. Two quiet games lately. Um, with no Marcus Smart, you know, I'm, I'd be willing to take a flyer on, well, it's not so much a flyer on Dame Lillard, but uh, I think that he can get back to his high 40s, and, you know, potentially into the 50s range scoring tonight. Uh, CJ at 7,000. Um, I probably have a little bit more interest in CJ, actually, than Dame, just from the matchup perspective. It's just a little bit better. Uh, but again, like I don't like running into good defensive teams. Um, so I'll I'll look at Dame a little bit. I'll look at CJ a little bit. Um, but other than that, I, I'm not really interested in Aminu at that price. I don't care how well he's been playing uh, back-to-back 40-point games. I don't think this one's the one for him. Celtics cut out threes a lot. Uh, so unless you're going to get a lot of like blocks and steals, I don't really see it. Um, there's just not a ton to like here. Now Boston, 98.25 implied total is 19th, second worst on the slate. Uh, Blazers are you know a solid defensive team. Um, Rozier at 7,000. Nah. Like I don't, I don't see a ton there. Uh, maybe a little small flyer in a GPP. Um, Al Horford, uh, no thanks. Uh, Marcus Morris, uh, maybe uh, he's probably relatively safe. But again, there's just not a ton here for me. Uh, there's not enough talent. I don't. That's probably not the right word, but it's just a really unsexy DFS game. Between this and San Antonio and the Jazz, like, I don't see a ton of guys where you're going to be like, oh, you should smash that. There's too many games tonight to try to force stuff that isn't very good. Golden State. So Curry, expected to play tonight. No Draymond. Still no Clay. Still no Durant. Um... I think that Nick Young looks kind of interesting in a GPP. With Curry back, it sort of changes the shape of the team. So I think that Nick Young would be in a position to get some looks. Um, I really wouldn't want much of Curry other than just a flyer. Him coming back, it's against Atlanta, too, where, you know, he probably, like, there's a really realistic chance he doesn't even play in the fourth. Warriors are nine and a half point favorites at home. Um, so temper expectations of Curry. Obviously, he's a dude that can just shoot the lights out and shoot himself into a game, but uh, I think that he's just going to try to get back into a little bit of game shape after being out for a couple weeks. Uh, one guy I'm definitely interested in will be Jordan Bell. Uh, starting to get minutes again. Played 23 in the last one. I think that if he can get 23 minutes again against this Atlanta front line, um, at 4,100, there's a very good chance that he could provide some value. So he's someone that I like a lot as a as a punt play at power forward. Um, after that, I mean, you're just you're shooting you're shooting darts. Uh, you're hoping for the best. You know, maybe Kavon Looney, but he's already up to 4,800. So I don't you know I don't see a ton of appeal there. 4,100 on DK is probably a little bit more palatable. But really, for me. I'm going to look to use Bell as a bit of a punt. Curry, I'll be underweight on. Or at least I hope that I am. Um, And then uh, I think Nick Young is worth, you know, sort of a GPP look. Finally, we go to Atlanta. Uh, I'm not expecting Collins to play. uh, But if that changes, I will make an update. Schroeder sat out the last game, so I'd expect him to play here. 7,300. On FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. He went for 55 in his last time out. Um, I don't have any problem playing him here. Uh, be careful of the minutes, but other than that, uh, I think that this is a pretty good spot for him, you know, playing against what's largely the the Warriors B team. Uh, Damian Lee continuing to get minutes, although oddly enough got less minutes and provided huge value last night as opposed to getting a lot of minutes and providing less value, you know, a couple nights before. But at 3,700, if you need a a punt shooting guard, he is the best option on the board tonight. 
And then uh, if you want to cycle in Deadman or Muscala, if Collins is officially out, um, I'd be fine with using both of them. Um, I think Deadman is a better play in a GPP scenario, has the ability to really fill up the stat sheet, and at 5,600, um, you know, he could provide a bunch of value at center there. So let's throw this stuff in the optimizer and see what gets spit out because on 10 game slates, I always find it really interesting. And there's some weird injuries and stuff. Some really weird bug where it's pasting like really elaborate nonsense and I don't really know how to fix it. I think my file is corrupted and I don't really feel like rebuilding it. Let's see if I can copy it myself. Because it's obviously, uh, they're not liking this. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know how to fix this or make it not do that. This is making it kind of difficult for me. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. I think that I'm going to have to rebuild this file. Yeah, it just keeps doing it. Oop. Okay, I think we're good there. Sorry, guys. So as I said before, no live stream tonight, but um, you know I'll be around all day for any questions, and I'll be around at lock. So don't feel free to hit me up in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. Alrighty, what do we got? So I definitely want to start with Jabari. And then I think that naturally takes me to Russ. Um, I actually think I'd be fine with Damian Lee there, which could open me up for Lou Will. If we grab Jordan Bell, that's five lineups. So, like, I think, I mean, I like a lot of this. Like, I'd be fine here. I'd be fine here. I'd be fine with both of these. I think lots of good GPP lineups there. I'm just, I'm a big, big fan of Jabari tonight, and I think that's going to open up some stuff, you know, get a couple extra hundred bucks to, to scatter. But there's enough value and enough solid plays out there that I'm going to be really excited to see what gets spit out later tonight. Hopefully there's not a lot of late news. I hate scrambling. It's too much work. Ugh. Let's upload those projections. Nice, still there. Delete, delete, delete. Like a Matt Hardy. Alrighty, bump up the randomness. Let's see what you got, DK. It's always a always a mystery for me here. There we go. A lot of Damian Lee might be a little too high in the projections, but Jabari, Russ, Towns, I like all of that. Schroeder, too much Al Horford in my opinion. All right, let's grab Towns. Who else is out there? Let's grab Jabari. Let's grab Schroeder.
what do these old Depot lineups look like? Okay, so that makes you go to Kyle O'Quinn. That's a bit more of a flyer than I'd like to go to. So let's step down off of Oladipo. Let's look at someone like... Um, I don't know, Moutier? Is he hanging out anywhere? Nope, just one. Um, what happens if we go to Russ? And it ends up with Siakam, and that's not really a direction I want to go. I'm worth it in a flyer, but not my focus. What if we grab Jordan Bell? Yeah, there we go. Collison, Lee, Morris, Bell, Jokic, Schroeder, Parker, Towns. I like that in a GPP. Or even this next one with Richardson here instead of Schroeder. And then what's the wait? What's the other switch? Oh, now Schroeder's there. Richardson instead of Collison. Yeah, I think those are both interesting. Tonight's gonna be fun, guys. Um, again, thanks for all the you know the the support from everybody. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to do something that I love as a career moving forward. Um, so. As I get more information and as I know more, I'll be sure to pass that information along to you. But as of right now, assume that everything is business as usual. Um, I'm really looking forward to get getting started on Monday. Um, so check out awesomeo.com um, where you will be finding me covering daily fantasy sports uh, significantly more than I do already. Um, like and subscribe this video. Uh, Follow me on Twitter. Uh, check me out on Reddit. Um, but yeah, we're starting a new era on Monday, and it's going to be great. I'll see you guys later. Good luck tonight.